So hello everyone and welcome to Feature Friday here at TRM. We're going to talk about maps. Very simple thing to get started in Maximo and best of all, it's free. Let's go. Okay, so let's dig into how we can get maps for free in Maximo. First thing we'll mention is that uh, this is not an Esri or ArcGIS map integration. This is just using the basic maps that are available from Bing or Google. Find the map manager. It's under administration. Scroll down here about halfway and there's the map manager. It's always a good idea that you're logged in as Max Admin, of course. So once you launch the map manager, it will certainly appear on the screen. You can either start a brand new uh, map instance uh, or if you have some already, you can modify those. I'm gonna go ahead and fill my screen here with a couple that are already on my system. And I'm gonna use this one in particular here that's already configured to talk through all the different pieces that you need to understand. So there's quite a bit to talk about here on this screen. And I'm gonna start at the bottom. So whether you're using Bing or Google, you will need to have an account from either one of those companies in order to access the maps. Once you have built an account with either Bing or Google, you will then bring in the URLs that they expect you to use, as well as the security key that they're providing you as a result of your account. So that would be your very first step, is to set up a Bing or a Google map account and then get these details from that account that you can then put in on this map manager record. So now let's jump over to the top. Of course, typical record in Maximo, it has a number, it has a description of some kind. You will need to indicate which map provider you're using. Uh, maps can be enabled or disabled as you wish. And then of course, the maps can be activated site by site. You will have to put in at least one site in Maximo in order for the maps to appear. Um, you certainly can have multiple sites that would be able to access this map as well. We'll come back to some of the other fields that are here on the screen. Okay, so now that you have the map enabled, the service is connected to, let's see what we get. So if we just go over to assets and then down to locations, let's take a look at what the map would, uh, would look like here. So I'm just gonna open up a somewhat random location here just to show you that the maps are currently functional. So I chose a location record and you'll notice that down here, I don't have any address information on the location. So I would not be able to see this location on the map. But let's just see that the maps are actually working. Go over here to the far right hand side, choose the map tab, and you'll get a display of the entire world. Um, obviously, there's no address, so there's no location uh, for the map to display to you, but at least you know your maps are functional. So now let's choose a location that does have an address. I'm going to choose the very first one here. I know it has an address, a service address down here. And now if I go over to the map, I now see that same world map, but there is an indicator here as to where that particular location is located. So maps are functional. Let's do a little bit of refinement from here. So your next step here is creating service addresses for the different locations and then subsequently perhaps your assets as well. But from a location perspective, certainly you're familiar with the service address tab. And for the maps to function, you need to have this service address not only defined, but of a couple of other details here, is you need to have the address formatted, okay? So in addition to the individual data elements, you have them uh, here in the single field uh, all the way across. And then the latitude and longitude of that particular location. And that can be a little tricky to find. Uh, generally, you go to Bing or Google Maps, you can put in the address, and you'll be able to see what the lat long is. And then you simply enter those values into the fields for that service address. Once the service address is in Maximo, then of course you can apply it to locations, you can apply it to assets and other things as, as well. So that's an important step is then identifying the exact location um, of the particular location so that it shows up on the map. Okay, so far pretty easy. Create a map manager record, 
connect it to your Bing or Google Map account, and maps are functional in Maximo. Let's do some refinements now. So another point of refinement is back in the Map Manager itself. You'll notice for the particular site here, we have a zoom level of one, and we do not have any latitude or longitude. If you want the maps to initially zoom in closer to the locations, unlike what you've seen previously where they're zoomed out rather far, you can adjust the zoom level and you can either bring and you can bring that zoom level into a particular latitude and longitude so that things look a little closer uh, than what you've seen already. Okay, so what I've done here is I've gone to that location in Ottumwa, Iowa. I've clicked on the location record. I've gone to the map tab and because of my zoom and lat long settings, uh, it's now zoomed in initially quite a bit closer than, than what it was previously. You'll have to play with the zoom levels to decide which is, uh, is best for what you'd like to do. So that's it. Maps in Maximo, pretty straightforward. Thanks for attending uh, Feature Friday here at TRM. My name is John Q. Todd, one of the senior business consultants, and we hope to see you again. Enjoy your weekend. Thank you. Um.